around sniffing butts and doing stuff, okay? Now, I'm not saying that they become social butterflies, but they very often will start to come out of their shell and play a little bit with maybe one of the dogs or go up to people. But it takes time and we want it to be someone on their terms. But mostly we want your reaction always to be, instead of, oh, it's okay, it's okay, no, no. Don't you feed into it because then it's like, my leader is also kind of acting a little weird here. Maybe there is something wrong. So your whole attitude, always, is going to be a kind of, oh, hum, there's nothing wrong here. So if your dog is like, like this, you're not going to say a word. Okay? And then you'll just keep walking or whatever. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And just be very confident. And look confident and feel confident. And, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong here attitude. And I'm here with you and I'm the leader, so you're, you're cool. Okay? The more a dog sees you, as I said, the more control you have of your dog, the more your dog, and I, again, not in a negative way, but the more you set the parameters for this dog, this dog is going to feel secure. When we approach people, he doesn't push me to go over. These people don't start going over like this. Oh, no, it's all right. I love dogs. Yeah, lady, fine. But, you know, stay away from mine because my dog is fearful, and that's not the best way to do it. So sometimes you have to be assertive, okay? Sometimes when you're training your dog not to jump or, you know, you've got a fearful dog, you need to say, put your hand up if you have to. My dog is very fearful, and we have a certain way of letting her just, you know, so please don't just come over and get in her face. And nobody should do that anyway. So many people say, oh, I know dogs, I love dogs. And people are standing there saying, really, he's not real friendly. Maybe, oh, no, no, I love dogs. And the dog isn't looking aggressive, right? Because sometimes, you know, they're just cool looking and all that. And then they go over like this, and then the dog bites him in the face. You know, and then they wonder why. You know, so, um, you know, she doesn't do that anyway. Uh, go over to a dog and just immediately, you know, bend over and start petting this dog. There's a, a YouTube video of a woman on TV interviewing somebody with a dog. And she just gets right into this dog's face and the dog bites her right on TV. You know, oh, who would have known, you know. Anyway, so be assertive with people that, so that they don't just crowd her space and get in her face and make her even more scared. And tell Glenn, you have to alert Glenn. If there's anything unusual that needs to be known, make sure you tell Glenn at the beginning of class, okay? So that he's aware. Are we gonna focus on our nipping at all? Um, because she tends to nip, especially feet. Like if you're trying to eat dinner or you're trying to be on the computer, she'll come over and bite you. Okay, and bite, or, well, about bite you and bite your fingers, or bite and I'm trying to get him to get the same routine. She does it a lot with him, I think, to get him to play with her because they rival each other up. He's a litter mate. <laughs> yeah, right, kind of a litter mate. Yeah, let's talk about that now. In class, if your dog starts to do that, we have we have rings on the wall, heavy duty rings, mm -hmm. and you're going to just leash your dog to the ring and you're going to walk away. Okay, and other people will know not to get around that dog when he's in the state of, you know, nipping and jumping and all this kind of stuff. And, um, but let's talk about this right now. Anybody else with dogs jumping or nipping? Because both of these kind of fall into the same pattern here. Anybody? It's not aggressive. It's just like a, like a play with me, acknowledge me. Like, I'm gonna, like, it doesn't hurt. It's just, uh, you know, and then the more you kind of, like, no rocks you get down, the more, like, Aggressive. She does it, like a little bit more aggressive, aggressively. Yes. Yeah. It never is like the violent type of fight, but it's right. very annoying. <laughs> right. Well, we're going to talk about aggression later. So remember, aggression develops over time, and you never know if your dog's going to act aggressively. There are a lot of variables when it comes to aggression. And these dogs can act aggressively, and I'm sure that she, right now, it's not an aggressive kind of thing. Let's talk about non-aggressive jumping and nipping, okay? We're talking about non-aggressive. What does that mean? Well, first of all, remember what I said about to extinguish a behavior, okay? The first thing we have to do is say, what does this dog want? Let's see, the dog's jumping on me. I don't like this. I don't want the dog to jump. So we have to figure out what does the dog want? What is it usually that a dog 
of the type that you're talking about, jumping, nipping, what is it that they want? Attention. Attention. <laughs> it's almost always attention seeking, unless it's control. Some dogs control with their mouths, they control with the jumping. That's different. Everybody got that straight? So we're only dealing with dogs that nip and jump because they want your attention. They want to engage you in play or whatever. Everybody clear with that? Okay, so what do we do? Well, once we know what they want, now our job is show them what works and what doesn't work. How do we do that? Well, it's easy to show them what, what doesn't work. The dog jumps on me, they want attention, what's the worst thing you can do? Walk away. Now, that being said, some dogs, you can say, gone, and we use the word gone. Gone, and we can just walk away. I'm withdrawing my attention from you, okay? Some dogs, you can do that, and they'll go, oh, oh, oh. Most dogs, what do they do? Hey, fine, turn around, I'll jump all over your back, I'll bite your butt, you know. <laughs> fine, what do we do then? How do we withdraw our attention from them effectively? What we do is we leash them to something. We call it tethering. I don't like that word tether because it's a negative. You know, it sounds like you're going to hog tie them or something, you know. Uh, it's, it's a terrible word but because it has these negative connotations, but the fact is you're tethering the dog. You're leashing them to something. All right? And we'll talk about that in a minute. So essentially, this is the way it works. The dog comes over, jumps on you, or nips you. You say, gone. You leash the dog to something, and you walk away. All right? Now, you can stay in the same room or go out of the room, but you have to make sure you're aware of the dog at all times. Don't just walk out and go do something and an hour later come back. Uh-uh, because then this will not work. The fact is the timing of this is going to be important. When you leash them, when you take them off the leash is important, okay? So, gone, leash, walk away. You can stay in the room. If you have to leave for a bit, come back, whatever, but you don't give them any eye contact, don't talk to them. You're going to stay there until you learn you're jumping at nothing. Don't talk. That's, you're giving them attention. So it's like a time out for the hug. It's not really. It is, but it isn't. What it is is allowing you to withdraw your attention. That's what it's allowing. It's like a time out, but it isn't really. Because what we're showing the dog is, you try to get attention doing this, jumping, nipping, the thing you want goes away. You don't get it. You get zero. I don't even give you negative attention. I don't even yell at you. Nothing. I just say, gone, leash, walk away. Now, the dog's on the leash. And I'll talk about the leashes and where to put them and all this stuff. So now, when do we take the dog off the leash? Well. First of all, a lot of dogs, when you leash them the first time, they're going to bark. Most dogs. And then it's like, and then after a time, it's like, you know, you'll hear all these changes. For a lot of dogs, not all dogs, but a lot of dogs. And you're going to ignore it. Hopefully you don't live in a condo with paper thin walls or apartments. Because you're going to have to ignore the dog. You can be in the same room, but you're not going to give any eye contact. You're not going to talk to them. You're just going to ignore them. You are literally and figuratively turning your back on this dog. They learn that you just, that's it, the thing you want. You just made this good thing that you want go away. You, the dog, you have control. You have control. And that's what this is all about. Showing the dog that they have control. When you do that, the thing you want goes away. You made the thing go away. You want that thing to be back and get attention? Then here, these are the things you can do at, to control me giving you attention. But the first step is showing them this doesn't work. The jumping and the nipping don't work. So they're on the leash, they're barking, whatever. You have to wait until this dog calms down. And I mean calm. you know what a calm dog looks like? You know, just calm. Not like, all right, I'm not barking, you know, but their butt's up in the air and they're saying, you know, I'm just waiting for you to get me off this leash. You know, no. I mean 
come. Even if they stop barking, that doesn't mean they're calm, okay? Once they've calmed down, and you see that they're finally just kind of giving it up and they've calmed down, I want you to count about two minutes, more or less. Because we want to make sure this really is calm. Because sometimes there's just a break in the barking, and then they go back to it. Do you know what I mean? I want to see that their brain chemistry now has normalized. They're out of that 